Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. In today's video, we have some easy hacks for making everyday home decor on a budget. So sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this large frame that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet. I love getting frames at Goodwill Outlet, especially these big ones because they're only 79 cent and they're always a great quality. One of these disposable grill toppers, these come in a pack of three. I get mine from Dollar General, but they also sell these at Walmart. A wood bead wreath from the Dollar Tree some lamb's ear from Walmart, some cotton pods from the Dollar Tree, a small piece of ribbon, I'm using this from the Dollar Tree, a sawtooth hanger, some white chalk paint, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I'm going to do is take everything out of my frame. I'm not going to be needing any of this, including the glass. And I'm pulling all of those little tabs out of the frame. Now, I just used a pair of wire cutters. These are jewelry wire cutters, and they pulled out really easily. Then I'm also going to take off that hanger because it had been beat up and it was missing a nail in it. Now I'm going to use one of my wet wipes and just kind of clean this up. It did come from the thrift store. And then once I get it cleaned up, I'm going to give it a good coat of paint. Now I only used one coat on mine because I'm going to be distressing this. But if I had been going to leave it solid, I probably would have given it two coats just to make sure that it wasn't streaky. We'll paint the top and the sides and then set it aside to dry. Once my paint was dry, I'm going to attach my wire to the back of this. Now, I like using this wire. I know that it's not chicken wire, but it gives you that same look to it, and it's a lot easier to work with, in my opinion. I did fold up the edges so that it would fit down in my frame, but this frame, y'all, it is a good quality frame. It was so dense that I could not get the staples to go down in it. I tried a couple of times with my staple gun. So I ended up going and getting my husband. And even he had trouble getting some of these in. But with a little persistence, we were able to get it stapled onto the back of my frame. Now to give this more of a farmhouse look, I am going to distress it. I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper and lightly went over all of the lifted edges. This frame had some really pretty beveling on it and this brought it out beautifully. Now I'm going to take my ribbon and figure out how much I need to be able to hold my wreath onto my frame. Y'all, this wreath was so warped out of shape. I just had to keep playing with it and I was finally able to get it where it was kind of round. Now I wanted to use a plain piece of burlap ribbon, but I didn't have any on hand. So I took this piece that I had left over from the Dollar Tree and I took the lace off. All you have to do is just kind of pull it back a little bit and clip those threads. And once it comes off, you have a nice piece of plain burlap ribbon. Bonus, I can use the lace on something else. Now I'm going to take my ribbon and I put it around my wreath and then I'm going to pull it to the back and trim it off so that you can't see it through the wire and use a little bit of hot glue to glue it into the center. Then I'm going to take a new sawtooth hanger and I used my awl to try to make a starter hole for this because like I said, this frame is so dense that it was hard to get anything nailed into it. I did end up using this thick picture that I had that kind of held it in place and that helped me be able to get my nails in there after I made my starter hole with my awl. Now that I have my hanger on, we're going to flip it back over and I'm going to take my lamb's ear and just trim off those ends. They are very long to be used in floral arrangements, but I didn't need those tails. And then I decided to attach it to my wreath 
using floral wire. Now this is going to give me the opportunity to change it out without having to worry about glue messing up my frame. And it only took a couple of pieces of wire on each one of these to hold it in. I tried to do it so that either the cotton pods or the leaves from the lamb's ear would cover up the wire. Now, a lot of my leaves were showing the back side of them. So once I got these wired on, I did flip over a couple of the leaves and use a little bit of hot glue just to kind of glue them down to each other so that you could see the front of the leaves. Now I'm going to take those three cotton pods that I got from the Dollar Tree and we are going to glue them on the stems of our lamb's ear and once we get that glued down this project is complete Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. Don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this frame that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet for 59 cent. Some ivory chalk paint, a piece of burlap, this was part of a napkin that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some lace ribbon, I ended up using the cream ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Some florals from Joann Fabrics and my glue gun and some glue sticks. We're going to start off by taking everything out of our frame and getting it ready to paint. But when I tried to get the glass out, y'all, it was not coming out. I ended up having to get my hammer and break it out. If you have to do that, just make sure that you don't cut yourself. Now we're going to paint our frame with our ivory chalk paint. One of the things that I loved about this frame was all of this detail work that was on it. It's swirly and it's just so pretty and I knew that the paint was really going to bring that out. However, it did make it a little tricky when it came to painting it. I had to kind of stipple my brush on up and down to make sure that I got down into the detail, but then I would have to go over it several times to make sure that the paint didn't pull up while our paint is drying, I'm going to work on the insert. I knew that I was gonna use the cardboard that came in this because it was rather deep and I knew that this fit it, but I glued it together to make sure that it didn't come apart. Then I took my burlap and I figured out how wide I needed to cut it and we're going to pull a string. This is going to give us a cut line. If you will follow that, you will get a straight edge every time. Now I'm going to take that burlap and I flip it up to make a pocket. Then we're just going to use some hot glue on either side to hold this pocket down. Now I'll lay my burlap right back on top of my cardboard, figure out how long it needs to be. We're going to pull another string and cut it down. Now I will say that my pocket was too deep, but I don't figure that out just yet. I have to sleep on it before I decide to change it. Now I'm gonna take that ribbon and I glue a piece right along the top of my pocket. Then I'm gonna use my hot glue around the edges of the cardboard and glue my pocket right onto this insert. Now we'll take our flowers and I'm just going to cut them apart and stick them down into my pocket. This is when I knew that this wasn't gonna work. Y'all, I'm so stubborn. I could see that this was too deep and it wasn't gonna work, but I just kept putting things in there. I kept thinking, oh no, it'll get better or I'll figure out something that's gonna make it work or even, you know, once it gets in there, it won't look so bad. Now that my paint is dry, I'm gonna use a small piece of sandpaper and just kind of go over that detail, lightly distressing it and making all of the detail work really pop out. I love how this made this frame look. It gave it such a pretty farmhouse rustic look. 
Now I'm gonna put everything back together. This is when I really saw that, yeah, no matter what I did, it wasn't gonna work. But I put it together and I left it overnight thinking about it. And I come back the next day and decided to take everything out. I pulled down the edges of my pocket and flipped it over and instantly it looked better. So I'm gonna use my hot glue and just glue that down. I did tear my burlap a little bit, so I repaired it there. And then we'll take another piece of our ribbon and glue it right along the bottom of the flap that I made. And this is going to make all the difference in the world. Now we'll take our pocket and put it back into our frame, add our backing to it. And once we do that, this project will be complete. So simple, but so farmhouse pretty. We'd love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think. Your comments fuel our creativity. y'all it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use one of these wood frames with 10 boards from the Dollar Tree, some white chalk paint, some magnets. Now my husband gave me these but you can get magnets out of the craft section at the Dollar Tree, some fabric flowers from Hobby Lobby, some burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some of this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. When I first saw this magnetic board at the Dollar Tree, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I've been wanting something that I could stick notes on or pictures or even those little round magnetic boxes that you can get from the Dollar Tree that could hold like beads or pins or anything like that. Now, this is not wood. It says it is, and it kind of looks like wood, but it's actually plastic. I was gonna paint it regardless, even before I knew that. So I went in with my painter's tape and I taped it off so that I wouldn't get any paint on the silver part of this. And then I'm gonna use my white chalk paint and paint the frame. Now I did only paint the top and the sides and I had to give it a couple of coats. I guess because it's plastic, it's a little bit slick and it was kind of streaky after one, but I gave it two good coats, letting it dry in between and then we're gonna set this aside and let it completely dry. While that is drying, I'm going to work on a simple little bow to go on this. I like this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, so I just took it and I looped it a couple of times on each side and trimmed it off. And then we're gonna use some twine, wrap it around the center about three or four times, and then tie it into a double knot at the back. This is such a simple way to make a bow, but it always turns out really cute. Now we're just gonna trim off those ends and fluff it out, and we have a cute rustic bow. Now, I didn't want to just use magnets on this. Y'all know I'm a little bit extra. And I had some of these cute little fabric flowers that I had gotten out of the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. So I took some of these magnets that my husband gave me and used my hot glue gun and I just glued the flowers onto the magnets. And I think this kind of gives it even more of a cute country farmhouse look. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to remove the tape and you see we have some nice clean edges. But to make this more farmhouse, I think it kind of has to be distressed. So I grabbed a piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna lightly go over the edges of this and distress it just a little bit to give it that farmhouse look. 
Now before I do anything else to the front of this, I want to go ahead and add a hanger. And I'm just using some twine. I find the center of this and I put the center of my twine in the center. I glue down the ends of it and I had a little bit of burlap left over. You could also use ribbon or even paper that I'm going to stick over the ends of this and it's just going to make it more sturdy so that it doesn't pop off easily. Now we can flip this over. I'm going to take some of my boxwood um, pick that I got from Walmart. I pull a couple pieces off and I center it up and then I just attach it to the top of my frame with my hot glue gun. I'm going to add some glue to the center of the bow and press it right into the center of that boxwood. Now we'll add our magnets on there. I've got a couple of those little magnetic boxes that I can put things in. And then I also had this cute little magnet from Magnolia um, that one of my friends brought me from Texas. And once we get all that off, this project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.